it's happening. The signs of the last days prophecies are happening, just as Bible prophecy foretold. And it's revealing. We are nearing the end of this age and the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ for his church. Welcome to the Sunday evening. Watch and pray live stream from Signs of the Last Days Ministry, where we follow the commandment of Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 21 to watch and pray so that we may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand with the Lord Jesus. So we are here watching with you the signs of the last day's prophecies happening in world events and conditions, revealing we're nearing the appearance of Lord Jesus in the clouds to catch away his church. And we are here praying together with you this evening, encouraging one another in fellowship to be ready for that appearance of our Lord Jesus as we are going to watch and pray this evening. And we'll share together in your testimonies to build up our faith for a walk with the Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for being a part of this Signs of the Last Days Church community. Thank you for subscribing to and supporting this ministry with your prayers and with your offerings. We are supported by the Lord Jesus and you, his body of Christ, in the world. Your praying and your giving is what supports this ministry to be here and to continue as together we share the signs of the nearing appearance of Lord Jesus. Now, we have an important note of announcement this evening for this last day's church community that on this next Sunday, watch and pray live stream, next Sunday, watch and pray live stream, we will celebrate the Passover with the Lord Christ Jesus that evening. So have your fruit of the vine and unleavened bread at the ready for our next Sunday watch and pray live stream. And also, beforehand, before that, this next week, we are making a call to this entire Last Days Church community across the United States and across the nations of the world for us to have a joint day of prayer and fasting this next week. We must be mindful that the Lord Jesus came to his disciples and found them asleep. And he asked them, could you not watch with me one hour? So we are making the call this next week that you make time one day this next week to pray a holy hour, including in your prayer, this signs of the last day's ministry and our community and our coming celebration of the Lord's Passover communion next Sunday, watch and pray live stream. Whether you pray that as a contiguous hour or a half hour in the morning or a half hour in the evening or however, just watch and pray with the Lord for a holy hour one day this next week praying for this signs of the last day's ministry, praying for our community, and praying for our coming celebration of the Lord's Passover communion. And also, we are making the call for this signs of the last day's church community to also fast that day of your holy hour of prayer as well. The Lord said that in the days that we are waiting for our bridegroom to come, that we are to fast and to pray. And the Lord taught us that the spiritual operation of the administration of his kingdom does not happen except by prayer and fasting. So we are calling to this Signs of the Last Days church community around the world. We're calling for a holy hour of prayer on a day of fasting this next week for this last day's church. And if you're elderly, or if you have health conditions, consider doing a Daniel's Day fast for a day where you deny yourself meats and sweets 
on that day for Jesus Christ to deny ourselves, submit to our Lord in reverence, and to seek his face. Why are we doing this? Because the signs of the last day's prophecies are increasing, indicating that we need to watch and pray and fast together now, seeking the Lord because his appearance for his church is drawing near. To pray that his kingdom come and his will be done on earth and in us as it is in heaven, so that people may come to him in all spirit and all truth. For the Father seeks such true worshipers to worship him. So please join us in a day of a holy hour of prayer, in that day of fasting, for us to watch and pray and fast together in Jesus' name. It's time, high time, for us to seek after the Lord in these last days and for the will of God to be done in this last day's church community. Now, let's pray together over ourselves now for this Watch and Pray live stream here this evening. Lift your hands as you lift your heart and pray together with us. We pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ over this Watch and Pray live stream and over the signs of the last day's church community. We pray that the Holy Spirit of prophecy, which is the holy testimony of Lord Jesus, will reveal unto us his holy word of prophecy, hallelujah, that we may have eyes to see, have ears to hear, and have a heart of good ground to receive and obey. And everyone say, in Jesus' name, amen. There's more news from the Middle East, where as the Islamic Persians of Iran and their proxies of the Islamic Arab tribes, as they are attacking and fighting Israel, at the same time, Russia, who is the ally of Persia, Iran, and of the Arab tribes, Russia has now quietly been moving more Russian troops into Syria onto the border of Israel and also is now flying Russian fighter jets patrolling the border between Israel and Syria at the Golan Heights in a message that they are sending to Jerusalem of Israel. Russia, the ally of such as Iran, Gaza, Lebanon, and Syria, is sending a message to Jerusalem, Israel, and its supporters with Russia's decision to increase and make their presence known on the border of Israel at the Golan Heights, where we are watching now the positioning at the borders of Israel of those prophesied in the last days to have a major role in fulfillment of the last days prophecies of the Holy Bible. Israeli media reported that Russia's defense ministry has deployed more troops on Israel's border in Syria on the Golan Heights, where Israel has been striking at Iran at an increasing rate in recent months. They say the Russian forces from Russia's military police brigades are patrolling the Syrian border with Israel along the Syrian province of Kunetra and down to Dara, which would include Israel's border from Mount Hermon at the top all the way down to the Sea of Galilee and to Jordan. As they say, Russia is increasing their military outposts on Israel's border with Syria, with Russia making the decision to increase their military presence 
at the Golan, after Israel con after Russia condemned Israel for striking the consulate of the Iranian embassy in Syria. And we have just watched in the past 24 hours as Iran launched an attack on Israel with a large wave of 300 drones and missiles from Iran's own territory toward the Jewish state in the first ever direct, direct attack on Israel from the territory of the Islamic Republic of Iran. And now the world is waiting to see what Israel will do Will Israel respond to this direct attack of Iran upon Israel? And there's a lot of speculation that's going on right now about what Israel will do. Now, the United States has told Israel that they will not support Israel in them making a counterattack on Iran. In fact, the United States government is telling, the White House is telling Israel for them to, quote, take the win, unquote, saying that it was Israel that had attacked the Iranian embassy in Syria, killing the top-level Iranian general. Now, Iran has responded with this wave of drone and missiles in this large attack on Israel yesterday evening, our time. And the United States is telling Israel, stop it. Stop now. Slow this down. Do not respond further. But here's the thing. If the Lord is wanting us to now have a major, major prophetic escalation that deeply pushes everyone down further the road to the prophecies that are up next to be fulfilled relative to Israel in conflict with its enemies. If the Lord wants us to have a major, major prophetic escal uh, escalation to do that, the thing is, is that Netanyahu has been licking his chops for years, wanting an excuse and an opportunity to directly attack Iran. And Israel has already showed the tendency here recently to go its own way with its own ideas and its own plans irrelevant of what the United States says. For example, this attack that Israel just made on the Iranian embassy, that is just verboten for any country to attack another country's embassy because those embassies are the same as the sovereign soil of that country. It's the same as making a direct attack upon that country. And Israel made this attack upon the Iranian embassy in Syria killing several and killing this very top level Iranian general of the IRGC Quds Force. So they went out and did that all on their own, which was a huge major escalation between Israel and Iran. And given that in the past, Israel made strikes on the nuclear facilities of the nuclear facilities that were being built by Iraq and by Syria. And given that Netanyahu has been wanting an opportunity to attack Iran for a long time, and given that he has been railing against Iran's nuclear program, if it's the Lord's will for us to have a major, major prophetic ex ex escalation that further isolates Israel and further enrages the Islamic countries. It could be that Netanyahu would authorize a strike on Iran 
on some part of their nuclear facilities. Israel's did it before. They did it in Iraq. They did it in Syria. They attacked those nuclear programs. Of course, they were in early stages, but they attacked those nuclear sites and, and destroyed them. Now, Iran is a whole lot further away, which, which complicates matters greatly for a strike like that. But Israel has always showed innovation and the willingness to take on great risk. And also, Iran's nuclear program is, is very advanced already. But there's parts of that nuclear infrastructure that, that Israel could get to. So just on the far end of the spectrum, if it is the Lord's will for major, major prophetic escalation, that kind of a attack on Iran's nuclear infrastructure in some way, being authorized by Netanyahu, is a possibility. We're not saying it will happen. We're just saying that it could be a possibility. But Israel has a plethora of options that they could use to respond to Iran's attack. My gut sense is, is that they will respond, but they could respond by attacking any of the Iranian proxies that are encircled around Israel. They could attack Iranian forces in Syria. They could make a major attack on Damascus. And that is prophesied to happen in the future that that there will be such war between Israel and the Arabs that Damascus is going to be destroyed. We're not saying that's going to happen now, but Israel has already made a lot of attacks around Damascus. There's a lot of Iranian troops, bases, people around Damascus. So that's an option. There's a lot of options that Israel has. We will wait and see whether they will heed the United States and not do anything my gut feel is they'll ignore the United States on this and whether they'll do some proxy, Iranian proxy attack to do something between halfway between what the U.S. wants, which is nothing and something even further on the end of the spectrum, far spectrum to where what I'm talking about of Israel doing some kind of attack on Iranian nuclear infrastructure within Iran. We will see, but I think this next week, the next 72 hours going into this next week is going to be very critical to watch and to see what happens. And it is possible that there will be a significant further escalation. Iran has already put the word out to Israel that if Israel does make a response, that then Iran will further respond. So then you're going to get into a, a self-feeding cycle of retaliation upon retaliation, which is what Israel and its Islamic Arab enemies have been in for, for years already, but it would just escalate into a further intensity. So now we will wait and see what the response may be of Israel toward Iran. And there will be some kind of a response. But at the same time as that Israel was attacking the Iranian embassy in Syria, and now as Iran has counterattacked Israel with a large wave of 300 drones and missiles, at the same time, Russia has called on the Jewish state of Israel to cease all attacks into Syria, but Israel did not. And now, at the same time as all of this other activity is going on, Russia has been moving Russian military troops, additional troops, onto the border of Israel at the Golan Heights with Syria. Russia had called on, on the Jewish state of Israel to cease all attacks into Syria such as on that Iranian embassy, with Russia saying that these attacks by Israel are completely unacceptable actions. 
with the Kremlin spokesperson saying that such attacks by Israel is violating all the foundations of international law as Russia has continuously condemned and threatened Israel over the hundreds, and it's been hundreds, I saw one article recently that's been about 300, I think, airstrikes that Israel has made into Syria that Israel says was for the purpose to destroy Iranian weapons brought into Syria and to push back Iranian troops coming near the border of Israel. But Russia has also denied that Israel has any sovereignty over the Golan Heights, with Russia even connecting Israel, quote, occupying, unquote, the Golan Heights, Russia has connected it directly to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And as I said back in the very beginning when Russia invaded Ukraine, I told you two things, community. I told you, one, that this invasion of Russia into Ukraine is connected to Israel. And I told you, two, that Russia is prophesied to bring Ukraine under their dominion. In some way, shape, or form, Russia will have the victory in Ukraine. And then three, I told you that the Russia war on Ukraine will then connect events that will lead Russia to Israel. And we will watch and pray as we watch for these things to happen. But Russia itself has directly connected Russia's invasion of eastern Ukraine to Israel's occupation of the Golan Heights, what Russia calls the occupation, and what Russia's allies of the Arabs call the Russian occupation. Russia denies that Ukraine has any sovereignty over the Donbass region in eastern Ukraine. And Russia also denies that Israel has any right of sovereignty over the eastern region of Israel called the Golan. It's the same exact quid pro quo. Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, who is Putin's lapdog, he has accused Israel and the United States of being hypocritical in the recognition of the Golan Heights as part of sovereign Israel, with him comparing, as I said, the Golan Heights to the Donbass of eastern Ukraine, with Lavrov, who is at the highest levels of Russia's Kremlin government. He is a right-hand guy of Putin with Lavrov saying that Israel and the U.S. are not respecting the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Syria, with Russia's ambassador telling the U.N. Security Council that Russia does not recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights, but said that it belongs to Syria. Israeli TV has also reported that Russia is raising the stakes with their military moves now onto Israel's Syrian border. As Israeli TV, they are saying that Russia is now surging into the Middle East region, where they said that simultaneously, they said that simultaneously, as Russian forces were expanding their presence on the Golan Heights, that also Russia's warships were also entering the Red Sea. With them saying that Russia is signaling to Jerusalem that Russia is asserting itself in the Middle East at Israel. As Russia appears to be aligning its actions with its rhetoric, were Russia deploying ships to the Red Sea amidst escalating tensions between Israel and its Arab enemies. Russia is signaling its willingness to engage in that volatile Red Sea area that could potentially alter the dynamics of the Middle East, west and south of Israel. And 
Russia's increased military presence now along the Israeli-Syrian border can also serve, they said, to bolster Russia's position on the ground north and east of Israel in the event of an escalating broader conflict. They said with all of this, positioning Russia as a key player in the Middle East region because Israel is putting their boots on the ground surrounding Israel. With them saying that Moscow is definitely sending a message to Jerusalem due to the recent increasing tensions between Russia and Israel, particularly now with Russia's outright support of Hamas after the heinous October 7th Black Sabbath attack on Israel, with Russia just coming right out outright saying that they were in full support of Hamas after Hamas had killed hundreds, over a thousand of Israelis, men, women, children, babies, and the elderly. Russia came out and said that they fully support these war criminals of Hamas after the October 7th Black Sabbath attack. While Israel at the same time has been making statements in support of Ukraine that Russia is attacking. <laughs> Israel is making statements in support of Ukraine while Russia has been making statements of support for Syria, Israel's enemy, while also Russia is increasing its military presence along Israel's border with Syria. Arab media, in addition to Israeli media and Israeli TV, Arab media has also reported about the Russian Defense Ministry, how that the Russian Defense Ministry, in addition to moving more troops onto the Israel-Syrian border, the Russian Defense Ministry, they said that the Russian Air Force is also now flying air patrols along the Syrian border with Israel, along the Golan Heights that divides Israel and Syria, for the purpose, they said, to observe for provocations. And they said that the Israeli Air Force and artillery continues to target what Israel says is Iranian and Syrian rocket fire coming from inside southern Syria. So whose provocations is Russia going to be looking for? As Israel is repeating its, its strikes against military sites of the Syrians and Iranians in Kunetra and the Dara provinces in response to the launching of rockets from Syria into Israel. So now, now you have Russia flying military jet patrols along the Israeli-Syrian border looking for provocations, as Russia has already been condemning Israel for any strikes into Syria. Dr. Nasser al-Yusuf, an Arab expert on Russian affairs, was reported as saying in the Inab Baladi, an Arab newspaper in Syria, he said that there is a gradual escalation happening by both the Iranian and Israeli sides at the Syrian border at the Golan Heights, which hasn't had much reporting on that lately because of everything else going on. And he said that by Russia placing these additional troops and military outposts on the Israeli-Syrian border, along with these Russian military overflights on the border as well. He said that what Russia is doing is setting itself up in the role of being the judge between the two sides. But there is no way Russia can be any type of impartial arbiter with who its allies are and what Russia has already said and done against Ukraine and against Israel. But he is right 
that Russia is setting itself up to be the judge, to where Russia will judge against Israel in favor of its Islamic allies at the Israeli-Syrian border at the Golan Heights. And Russia's Islamic allies are overwhelmingly encouraging Russia to get after Israel. Not only the likes of the Islamic Republic of Iran, but also across the world to where even a place like Islamic Bangladesh, their media also reported on the Russian soldiers moving into the Golan Heights. As they describe Russia, we're talking about Islamic media around the world. As they are describing Russia as being the leading country in the world, demanding that the occupier, that's their words, that the occupier Israel stop the genocide in Gaza. And they said that this sends, that Russia sending more troops and, and building more military outposts on the Israeli border with Syria at the Golan, they said that this is sending a message to Israel that Russia has positioned itself to where Russia could enter the game at any moment. Again, that's their words. To where they said that Russia could enter, quote, the game, unquote, at any moment to where Russia's military, they said, could easily cross Israel's border and reach into Israel to deal with Israel. This is what Islamic media is saying in the world. And they also described that the UN, under Russia's leadership and the UN Security Council, has already adopted a UN resolution demanding that the occupier Israel withdraw from the occupied Golan Heights of Syria. As we see here clearly, <laughs> that the Arabs and the Islamist medias are basically saying, that Russia has positioned itself as the judge on the Israeli border at the Golan, and that Russia is supported by UN resolutions towards Russia could justifiably cross the Israeli Golan border as the liberator to take back Islamic Arab lands. Is this not perfectly describing how the Ezekiel 38 prophecy can be led up to. And I have seen it, folks, what, this blessed last day's church community that we love and pray for every day, I have seen it happen time and time again. We're out of the very mouths of those that are to play a role in fulfilling the promise of the fulfilling a prophecy of the Lord's holy word. They actually speak the prophecy out of their mouths before they actually do it. And this is what the Arab medias and the Islamist medias are saying in the Middle East and around the world. Here's the situation. The Assad regime of Syria has become powerless as they essentially have no financial resources and they now have explosive inflation. Their mechanisms of governmental and military control of the country are in shambles as they have become greatly dependent upon Iran, even at the local town level, to maintain some semblance of order. And there's a black market economy that is exploding. And in this type of environment is where Iran's Islamic Republic agenda through its Islamic Revolutionary Guard, this is where they thrive. The Assad regime has truly become a puppet head. It's just a puppet head in Syria now. Iran in Syria is a strong Middle East regional player, but who is in Syria that is a strong global player that is the only country with large troop, air force, and naval bases 
in Syria. And by the way, they also have the largest nuclear arsenal in the world. It's Russia. And only Russia for sure has the aggression, has the nature of aggression to absolutely put boots on the ground first before anyone else in any scenario. And who has Russia in its war on eastern Ukraine become more dependent on for weapons? And with whom has their military become more integrated with? It's Iran. And who is at war with Israel? They are at war. Who is at war with Israel? That just attacked Israel with a wave of 300 drones and missiles in retaliation upon Israel. It is Iran who is the close ally of Russia. So as Russian warships from their Pacific fleet enter the Red Sea amid heightened tensions, while also Russian forces are now moving into, more Russian forces are moving onto the Israeli border in Syria, where they are establishing more military outposts along the Israeli-Syrian border amidst heightened tensions between Israel with Iran and Syria. It raises the bona fide question about just what is Russia's intentions now in the Middle East concerning Israel. Concerning Israel, whom Russia is condemning them, saying they are illegally making strikes into Israel, excuse me, into Syria. And Russia is condemning Israel also, saying that they are a Nazi regime committing genocide in Gaza. Those are words that came out of Putin's mouth. And Russia is saying about Israel that Israel is in violation of international law for occupying the Golan Heights that they say belongs to Syria and not to Israel. What you have here is the perfect prophetic scenario that is building up for the ultimate fulfillments of the last day's prophecies of the coming conflicts between Israel with its Islamist enemies who are the allies of Gog of Magog, which the Holy Bible prophecy the Holy Bible prophecy along with the historians and scholars, including Mr. Putin himself. They say that Gog of Magog is the prince of Rus over the Russians. That is the country of aggression in the northern regions at the roof of the world beyond the Caucasus Mountains and beyond the Black and Caspian Seas on the Volga River, which is a perfect location description of the country today we call Russia. And the situation is now developing where the mother of all conflicts, the mother of all wars between Israel and all the Islamist Arabs that is prophesied in Isaiah 17, Amos 1 and 2, and Psalm 83, that conflict is becoming inevitable. Which Israel, in that conflict, will at first look like it is going to lose. As the prophecies describe that the glory of Jacob will wane, with it diminished. But it will not go out, as the Lord God will uphold Israel with his strong right arm to where Israel, as the Lord God has prophesied, will never again be plucked out completely from their land. Israel, when that war starts, Israel is going to look like it's going to lose. But then Israel is going to be sustained by the Lord. And then they're going to overcome and overpower the Arabs. It may be by the Samson option. The way the prophecies describe it in Psalm 83 could very well be. But then afterwards, 
after that mother of all wars between Israel and all the Arabs, afterwards, with Israel at peace, restored, and reconciled, reconciled with its Arab brothers after their great war as prophesied. Then Gog of Magog, Russia, together with its other Islamic allies, such as the Turks and Persia, Iran, who will not be happy with the outcome of what happened to their Arab proxies. Gog of Magog will be tempted, as prophesied in Ezekiel 38, to go up against a peaceful people of Israel in unwalled villages who now dwell safely. But that Islamic coalition with Gog of Magog, with Russia Magog, when their armies cross the border of Israel, as the Islamic media is describing that Russia should do now, when their armies invade Israel, that invasion of Israel, at the northern mountains, their armies will be discomfited by the Lord God of creation with nature destroying them by the word of God. And Gog of Magog is killed and buried there in Israel. And from that, from that, it leads into Ezekiel chapter 39 to where Magog, Russia, and the West, thinking they live in security in their coastlands, both of them will be attacked by fire which will burn up the current world order, bringing in a new world order, just as Mr. Putin has said that they will. He will bring in a new world order, that is, a world government of ten kings of the end time, from whom... Among those ten, the Antichrist will arise. In response, this government, end time government, will come in response to the world outcry for peace and safety from these major conflagrations, these major conflicts that will have happened, that the events we are watching now are leading up to. And it's amazing. The Joel chapter 3 prophecy says that all of this escalating conflict that is about to come, that is now pulling in the nations, which we are seeing happening now, as the Joel 3 prophecy foretold, it has all been started by little Gaza, which is biblical Philistia, where her retaliations on Israel will wind up causing the nations to proclaim, prepare for war as they wake up all their mighty men, as the nations will be awakened and gathered by God to come to Israel. We're ultimately at the Valley of Jehoshaphat, at Jerusalem, where the Lord will roar from Zion, as he utters his voice from Jerusalem. And then the Lord thrusts in his sickle of judgment into the winepress of the Lord, full with his grapes of wrath. And as the Joel chapter 3 prophecy says, multitudes... Multitudes are now in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. As we are near the brink of great prophetic conflict that is coming soon. And these events and conditions that we are watching happening now in the world are connecting directly to the end time as warning signs of the last day's prophecies revealing that it's time to prepare now for the nearing appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ 
It's time now to make the decision to believe and obey the actual preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ and his chosen apostles in their holy scriptures. While you can, as we are nearing the end of this time of grace in Christ Jesus. I ask you this evening, in the name of the Lord Jesus, type into the chat now, if the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of prophecy, if the words of prophecy has dealt with you, concerns you, I ask you to type into the chat here on this Watch and Pray live stream that I'm making a decision for Jesus Christ to obey his commandments in my life. Or if you're watching this as a video later, as thousands will, type into the comments of the video saying, I make a decision for Jesus Christ to obey his commandments in my life. Hallelujah. The Holy Scriptures say that we receive his grace through obedience to the faith in the name of Jesus Christ. That's Romans chapter 1, verse 5 through 6. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's in John 14 and 15. And in 1 John, the second chapter, the apostle, that was the apostle that was beloved of Jesus, that was closer to Jesus than anyone. That beloved apostle John said, by this shall we know that we love him if we keep his commandments. And Christ said that without obedience, faith is in vain. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 and verses 24 through 27. It's time to make the decision now to obey the commandment of Lord Jesus in John chapter 3 and verse 3. In John chapter 3 and verse 5 where Lord Jesus commanded that unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Or Jesus said, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And Jesus authorized and sanctioned only his chosen apostle in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 through 19 giving his chosen sanctioned apostle the keys to the kingdom of God to show people how to enter being born again of water and spirit. With Jesus also saying there that what his apostle preached was bound, recorded in heaven for the church of Jesus, which is eternal. And only the words of the preaching of Jesus and his chosen apostles is forever settled in heaven. And the apostles in the acts of their preaching told us how to be born again through the water in the name of Lord Jesus and through the Spirit in the baptism of the Holy Ghost of Lord Jesus. We're in Acts chapter 2. Lord Jesus started his church in Jerusalem. And they preached it again in Acts chapter 10 when the Lord started his church among the Gentiles. And they also preached it in Acts chapter 19 as the Lord spread his church among the Gentile nations. And that preached word of the apostles, sanctioned and authorized by Jesus Christ, is what tells us how to be born again of the water and of the Spirit, as Jesus said we must, to enter into the kingdom of God. It's time now to make that decision, to believe and obey, as we get ready now, so to escape all these things that will come to pass in the wrath of the tribulation of Revelation prophecy that the Bible says will come upon the world of disobedience, those who do not obey. If you're making some kind of decision in your life for the Lord Jesus this evening, if the Lord has dealt with you, is stirring you and leading you, and we've been having a revival in the past year, in the past 12 months in this Signs of the Last Days Church community where we have had so many saying, tell me where I can go near me, where I can be born again of the water and of the Spirit as the Lord Jesus and his apostles preached in the acts of their preaching. People are getting ready. People are getting ready. The signs are showing us it's high time to get ready now. And if you're making a decision in this watch and pray live stream, if, if you have 
said in this Watch and Pray live stream chat or in the comments that I'm making a decision for Jesus Christ, I want you to lift your hands as you lift your heart and let the hundreds of people on this Watch and Pray live stream in this beautiful Signs of the Last Days Church community, I want you to lift your hands and say this prayer together with all of us right now, a prayer of repentance and obedience as a next step of faith. Say it with us now. Dear Lord Jesus, hallelujah, I believe on you as the Son of God, that you died for me, that you rose from the dead for me, that I may be saved and complete in you. I repent. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Save me. I want you as the Savior and Lord of my life. Lead me now, Lord Jesus, in obedience, going forward and following you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. Oh, praise God, community. Glory to Jesus. We're believing that people willingly are saying that prayer and that they're willingly, the Lord is helping them to search their heart, to search their soul. They're making decisions in their life for the Lord Jesus Christ to where they can start or renew a relationship with the Lord Jesus that leads to the wonderful future the Lord Jesus Christ wants for each and every one of us. And if you need help finding someone to biblically baptize you and pray for you where you're located. You can contact us here at Signs of the Last Days Ministry to help you find someone. We've had people contact us from all across the United States and from other countries. And we've helped them all to find a place near them to where they can go and they can be born again of the water and of the Spirit as Jesus said we must according to the preaching of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus sanctioned and authorized as his will. Hallelujah. So contact us. Go to our website, signsofthelastdays.org. That's dot O-R-G. Go all the way down to the bottom of the website to the footer where there's some smaller print, and in that you'll find our email address. Copy that email address and then email us and say that you want help to find, a lo to find a location near you for biblical prayer and baptism. Give us the name of your town, your state, and your zip code, and we will definitely follow back up with you to assist you. We're about to pray now over your prayer requests here live on this Watch and Pray live stream. This, this ministry doesn't just teach about prophecy we are living the prophecy. And we're watching and we're praying together. Amen. And one prayer request that Signs of the Last Days ministry has is that if you appreciate biblical prophecy ministry, please support this Signs of the Last Days ministry and channel. First of all, with your prayers, please pray for us. And also with your offerings as the Lord leads you. We just ask that you would pray. And ask the Lord how he would lead you to support this prophetic last days ministry with your prayers and with your offerings. We truly depend upon the Lord and his body of Christ in the world as the only supply of the needs of this ministry. So we only ask that you just follow the scriptures of the Lord Jesus and his apostles. Where in Luke 6, Lord Jesus commanded us to give. And then the Lord said, it will be given back to you running over into your bosom. And the Lord said in Matthew 6, to seek first the kingdom of God. And then all things will be added unto us. And the apostles preached the same about giving. Or in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the apostle commanded, let each one give as you purpose in your heart cheerfully. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully as God is able to make all grace abound towards you, giving you sufficiency in all things and an abundance for every good work. 
So please pray about securely giving at their website, signsofthelastdays.org, on the giving page, your offering, no matter the amount, just as the Lord leads you. There's people that give $3, $5, some that give 20, some give 50, some give hundreds, some give hundreds. We leave that between you and the Lord. But just pray about how the Lord would lead you to give. And you can go to our website, signsofthelastdays.org, and on the giving page, there you can fill out the form. And you can also pray about joining with us as a partner in prophecy, where as you're filling out the form, you can check the recurring contribution button to where whatever amount you choose is just easily given each month for you, making your giving faithful unto the Lord. And no one is fully worshiping the Lord. No one is fully walking with the Lord unless we are worshiping Him in our giving just as well as we do in our voice and in our prayers. Also, if you would like, also there on the giving page on the website, you'll also find our mailing address to where you can mail in your offering with a check or money order as many others do. And also our PayPal link is there on the giving page also. And as always, we say thank you so much to all of our wonderful subscribers and supporters of this Signs of the Last Days ministry who are a part of this Last Days Church community, who are praying and giving so to share the signs of the coming of our Lord Jesus so more can get ready. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, it's time to pray, to testify. We're going to testify and build up our faith. It's time for the staff of testimony. Amen. Where that we testify for the Lord to build up our faith. And you don't want to miss, ever miss these testimonies because members of this last day's church community from whom these testimonies come from, sometimes they have a great word from the Lord for all of us that, are, that is so wonderful and such a blessing. And these testimonies are truly like a staff that support us in our walk with God. Hallelujah. Be testifying for the Lord. You can always give your testimony just under the comments of the last video that we've uploaded or the last watch and pray live stream we've done. You can put your testimonies glorifying the Lord there. Or you can also put your prayer requests as well. And this Wonderful Last Days Church community will pray. We pray as a church one for another. Hallelujah. So it's time for the staff of testimony and to blow the trumpet of Zion, the chauffeur of the trumpet of Zion, to blow it, declaring that our Lord Jesus is soon to come. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to get ready as we're being blessed by these testimonies, be thinking about putting your prayer requests into the Watch and Pray live stream. You want this prayer team here at this Signs of the Last Days Church community to pray for you. I've seen it time and time and time again where people have put in their prayer requests to this, this prayer church. And the Lord has done miracle after miracle. He's done miracles for me. The Lord has healed me through the prayers of this community before. We've had under, other wonderful healings. We've had people have provision that has been blessed to them, that has been brought to them through the prayers of this community. We've had people saved that, we, that members of this community had us praying for. We've had just wonderful answers to prayer again and again. And we're going to pray unto our Lord and Savior. The Lord Jesus is watching us. He's, he sees us. He's watching us. He's listening to us. I see someone's already put in a prayer request saying, pray that I'll be able to sleep at night. We're going to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have this testimony from Patricia. She says, Jesus is on the way. And he knows how to keep his children through it all. He's coming for us, church. And he knows how to keep us. Thank you, Patricia. Harry says, I know Jesus Christ is preparing us as his own to take us away to be with him. Amen, Harry. 
That's what's going on in this Watch and Pray live stream. The Lord is preparing us to get us ready. David says, I'm so thankful that William brings us these truths every week. I also send these broadcasts to the Philippines every week. Oh, that's wonderful, David. Thank you. That's what you need to be doing, Last Day's Church community. You need to be sharing these videos and these Watch and Pray live streams. You need to be sharing it everywhere. Be an evangelist, sharing it, just like David is. And we've had this, we've had this report from other people in our community. There's, there's another, a lady in Europe, who she takes these broadcasts and, and then uh, translates it into their language and shares it with communities. We've had people tell us how that they have Bible studies and they use these broadcasts and they use it as part of their Bible, their, their prophecy Bible studies. Amen. God be praised. Lord Jesus be thanked for how he is moving through this Signs of the Last Days Ministry and Church Community. Hallelujah. We also have this testimony from uh, Patricia. It says, Pastor William, I'm glad you came on tonight. There's so much going on. So it's good to be with others that you trust and who belong to our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for sharing with us, and God bless you all that are here. Amen, Patricia. That's a wonderful testimony. I love it. We must be together with others, and we're a last day's church, and we're in fellowship together with one another, blessing one another until the coming of our Lord Jesus. Miriam says that things are exactly how they were prophesied they would be, and our sweet Jesus is coming soon. Anthony says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Anthony says, thank God for the finished work of Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection of the gospel. Thank you, Jesus, for the gospel. Hallelujah! That we can believe and then obey, being identified with Jesus Christ. In his death with repentance, in his burial with baptism, and then also in his resurrection of being filled with the holy resurrection, Holy Ghost of the Lord Jesus Christ. As the Apostle Paul said, we are buried into Christ Jesus and raised up through Christ Jesus to be alive in his Holy Spirit. Mark says, excellent content and a great recap of events current and past. God bless you, your family, ministry, and health. Thank you, Mark. Pray for us. Pray for us in Jesus' name. Rosemary says, praise God for the truth. Preach it. The nation and the modern church better repent. God's grace and mercy is about over. Amen, Rose Marie. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, do thy mighty work, O Lord. Bless us in prayer. Bless us in fasting this next week. Bless us in communion. Get this church ready. Hallelujah. For the great work that God's going to do in these last days, these prophetic last days in Jesus' name. Maria, oh, I feel like blowing the trumpet in Zion. The Lord is coming. Oh, Jesus is coming. We're blowing the trumpet in Zion, making the warning. Get ready. Lift up your heads, O ye people, for the Lord is coming. Maria. Maria says, thanks to you, Sir William, for your prayers and preaching of the Word of God. You make it very easy to read and learn the Word of God. I am a Christian, and I declare with all my heart that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah and amen, Maria. And E-A-B-B-C-C -C tells us to keep the faith. 
Keep the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, it's time to pray now. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus. I see someone putting into the Watch and Pray live stream chat. They're saying, pray for me and my family. Oh, it's time to pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, I know there's so many of us that, that we have family that we want to see saved in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, let us pray in Christ's name, in the name of Jesus. Someone else says to pray because the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. It's time to work for Jesus in Jesus' name. Put your prayer requests into the Watch and Pray live stream chat. We're about to pray in the name of Jesus. Teresa sent in this prayer request. Teresa says, please pray for my sister Carmen, who is on her deathbed with cancer, that she has a peaceful passing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Teresa, we lift up you and your sister in the name of Jesus Christ and to our Lord and Savior, our great shepherd in Jesus' name. Linda says, please pray for me. I'm sick in bed with a lung infection. Thank you and God bless. In the name of Jesus, we lift you up, Linda, for healing in Jesus' name. Rosaria Derrick says, pray for my son to change and give up his drinking habits. Rosary Derrick, we lift up your son in the name of Jesus Christ and to our Lord and Savior that can save from the uttermost in Jesus' name. Kathleen says, please pray for my grandson wanting to transgender to a female. Kathleen, we pray for your grandson. We lift him up in the name of Jesus Christ to the Lord in Jesus' name. Maria, Maria says, please pray for my family that is divided. Pray that we all be united in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a wonderful prayer request, Maria. And like I said, there's many more that I'm sure have that same need. We lift you up, Maria, and your family in the name of the Lord Jesus. And let's do not forget to pray for Israel. Let us pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Israel so that all Israel may be saved in the name of Jesus. I see another prayer request saying, pray for lost souls and repentance in Nashville. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Also, community, let's don't forget to pray for souls. Pray for sinners to be saved. Pray for backsliders to be restored. Pray for the religiously deceived to have the scales fall from their eyes and their understanding to be opened in Jesus' name. Pray for the Lord to add to his church in these last days all that can be saved in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And please pray for this signs of the last day's ministry in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands right now as you lift your heart to the Lord. And let us begin to call together as a corporate body Upon the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, the only name given among men whereby we must be saved, the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus right now. Call out loud on Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we lift up all of these prayer requests that have been laid out before you in this Watch and Pray live stream. Every prayer request, Lord, we pray as the corporate last days church of Jesus Christ. We pray now, Lord, we lift up all of those prayer requests unto you, Lord, to save the lost, to heal the sick, to deliver your people, to provide provision, to give deliverance and lead your children in the name of of Jesus Christ. Lord, we lift up all these prayer requests that have been sent in. Lord Jesus, that we have called out before you, and we know that, Lord, you have said that where 
two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst of them. And Lord, amongst the hundreds of us that are gathered together now and the thousands that will be gathered together later in this watch and pray stream, we pray now in the glorious name of Jesus Christ that now, Lord Jesus, you who are watching us and listening to us, in Jesus' name, our Lord, bless, save, heal, deliver, provide, in Christ Jesus' holy name. Oh, raise your hands and give thanks to the Lord right now. In the name of Jesus, we give thanks to the Lord. We thank him in Jesus' name for moving. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord, over this last day's church community, that, Lord Jesus, this next week, as mighty powerful signs of the last day's prophecies can be happening, we pray, Lord, that you bless this last day's church community in their holy hour of prayer this next week and in their fasting that day this next week. Hallelujah. And we pray, Lord, that you will bless us and prepare us for the Passover communion that we're going to enjoy and celebrate with you, Lord Jesus, next Sunday in the Watch and Pray live stream, the Lord will. In the name, <laughs> hallelujah, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we depend upon you, Lord. We depend upon you, Lord. We trust upon you, Lord. We seek you, Lord. We can do nothing without you, but we can do all things through Christ. We can do all things through Christ, Jesus, who strengthens us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessings of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your fellowship. Thank you, Jesus, for the body of Christ, this last day's church getting ready for your appearance. Oh, praise God. Thanks be to God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for how the Lord Jesus Christ is moving and blessing in the midst of this Signs of the Last Days Church community. God bless you this evening. We thank you so much for being in this Watch and Pray live stream with us. We love this Last Days Church community. We pray for you every week, every day, in Jesus' name. And thank you so much for being a part of this Last Days Church. Please click the subscribe button on this channel if you haven't. Please click the bell to get all notifications for our live streams and videos. Community, be an evangelist. Share this channel and all of your channels of communication in your life. And click the thumbs up on videos. Place positive testimonies. Help to declare the coming of the Lord Jesus through the signs of the last days. And as we watch the signs of the last days happen, as Lord Jesus told us, keep looking up because these signs show us that our redemption is drawing near as the bridegroom of the church of Lord Jesus, his appearance is near. We're not looking for the end, but we're looking for the beginning of our wonderful future and Jesus Christ our Lord that is forever. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. In the blessed name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Upon the eastern sky.